you've got a lot of uh, alpha energy, and I would you could direct me anywhere, including into the mouth of or the, or the the maw, into the blood strewn round, into the mouth of the beast. One of your fucking comedy dates. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Look, you have a lot of tactical questions and a lot of philosophical questions, but before that, people should know I'm also a comic. If you like to laugh, and I mean hard, super hard, you come to the Edmonton Comic Strip, February 23, 24, 25. If you're in Nashville or anywhere close, March 2, 3, 4, I'm at Zany's. If you really like comedy in New York City, March 11th, one show only, Sony Hall, BrianCallen.com for all tickets. So, and then I'm in West Nyack. Just go to BrianCallen.com for my schedule. Let's get, that's my son. Let's get back to the podcast, or into the podcast. Okay, I got the red smoke. Gun run, north and south, west of the smoke, west of the smoke. Okay, copy, west of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Oh, wait a minute, give it to me, I need it. You're cleared hot. Copy, cleared hot. So if I'm interrogating somebody, that's I can use that as well. <sighs> Do you actually want to video your interrogations? Because well, it, it, there could be complications involved in that. I know. They're not. Into, no. See. Have you seen the documentary Zero Dark Thirty? Yes. Yes. I should say I lived it. Of course. Right? But, I, have, I haven't asked. Was it based on anything in your life? I, and Well, you, again, you keep waking up free every morning. I'll do what I do. Now, now I, would, I would record my fucking uh, interrogations because people want to study how I do it. Because it's all carrot. It's no stick. I get you to like me. And I get you to like me on a deep level. And so then you, you go start good talking. cop only? I go only good cop. I go, I understand how you feel. And I go because I study the history of where your movement comes from. You understand? What if time is of the essence? If time's of the essence, <laughs> then what I do is I have um, what I call the uh, sexy brigade. And the sexy brigade <laughs> is a group of top-notch, top-notch smoke shows. Could be women, could be men, because I don't know where you lean, what your proclivity is, but I'll find out. Some people I'll find don't out. even know where they lean. Yeah, and they're patriots. So they'll do whatever it takes if you speak, if you talk. But you're going to be singing like a canary when you see the all-star team that I parade in front of you. And I go, and it's men and women, and I don't know what your proclivity is, but I go, now here's the thing. You get the pick. You get the pick if you play ball. And I'm going to leave the room, and I'm going to give you exactly 15 minutes, and let's be honest, that's all it takes for you. And that'll be it. I f from a logistical perspective. Yeah. I feel like this is a school bus worth of staff that you're traveling with. How do you keep that low profile and maybe a so, less permissive environment? Yes, excellent, excellent question. We're a traveling circus, mm. right? So That's your cover for action, cover for status? It's always my cover for action. You have your traveling, you have your contortionist, you've got your, you know, you've got all kinds of things. You have your strongmen, um, right? And you have your lion tamer. Because some people love a big mustache on a man. You don't think it would throw anybody off that all of these were smoke shows, both male and female? No, the look most at Cirque du Soleil. Start. Yeah, you but the circus have sex with everybody in that fucking troop. Cirque, Cirque du Soleil is gymnastics. You're talking lion tamer. Yeah. Strong man. Yes. These, are, these are different. I'm talking old school circus, brother. Old school circus, and we've lost that that art. That's a forgotten art. It's like stonemasonry. The old school circuses. The lady with the beard, huh? Or was, that, or was that a man with tits? That's a great question and a modern question <laughs> and a progressive question. Thank you. Thank you. It's whoever that person decides they are in that moment. <sighs> How do we navigate our way through society when you can decide who you are in whatever moment that there is and there are no rules or boundaries? Well, I think the reason I don't worry so much about the far left insanity is because you can't navigate it and you can't apply it the level of detail. So you think it'll wreck it, the school driver, the school bus driver of that bus, you think it'll wreck on its own? Yes, my buddy had it best. We were playing tennis, a very smart guy, and, I, and he's got kids my age, and I said, you know, this, this, this woke stuff, this transgender stuff, this, this, I'm going through all the things like, you know, America is an oppressive uh, patriarchy. I said, well, what are we going to do about this? And he goes, you know, there's a, there's a land war in East Asia in this place called Vietnam. We really got to get over there and actually stop all the, you know, and it was the same thing. I'm worrying about something that probably is going to rectify itself or that I have no control over because it's a phase 
that we're going through. The United States has always gone through various religious revivals. We were a very religious country, but the Quaker movement, the Christian science movement, this is, don't make no mistake, this is the rise of the new Puritans. They are, there, there is the far left, and by the way, the far right has its own criticisms, but let's just take, when I say the far left, let's talk about the, the, the what Jordan Peterson would call a postmodern ideas that come out of academia, right? There's no category. A category is basically, it's Jacques Derrida, it's, it's the words are what you say they are and all that stuff. Um, that, that's, that's, uh, their, their sex is, um, they're, they're as puritanical as the Puritans were themselves about. Sex is dangerous. Don't eroticize anybody. Don't, don't sexualize anyone. It, it's all that. And it just becomes a snake eating its own tail. Good luck. And it's no fun. Basically, they're the people, the people on the right and the left who are kind of like on the, both extremes are like, they don't want you dancing. No dancing. It leads to fun and sex. So, you know, it, it just creates a, a healthy backlash intellectually and artistically. That's what I have to say. Any questions? I mean, I have a variety of questions, but now that I'm... You, are, you had tactical questions. I do, but, yeah. you know, one of the things happening right now in the military that I'm hearing about is the, the woke ideology, to use a term that I've heard others use, is infiltrating our military infrastructure. What are your thoughts on that? As somebody who... I mean, before you answer that, when did you realize and first start thinking about things at a tactical level? God, it's so funny, man. When I realized that, when I realized that at the end of the day, life's a war, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> life's a war, and uh, that's why you got to keep your arms heavy and your belly tight. Okay, you keep your eyes sharp and clear. You keep your heart full. All of, right? what, of what? Because there are people that want to take what you got. Okay. Now, they might be blue collar, they might be white collar, but either way, you got stuff, other people covet it. So be ready. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So always, always, always be planning ahead. If you and I are in a fight, I noticed you got a glass of water there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have some of that water? Can I have some of that water? Did you already have some of that water? Yeah. I poisoned it. You see I what actually, I'm saying? I didn't really, but that's what... Though. No, but, but I'm saying if... if if I want to get at you and we're going to have a situation, I thought ahead of you. What's your favorite type of warfare? My, my favorite type of warfare is what I call shadow wars. So I battle in the shadows. And I, I also like asymmetrical warfare. The shadows of the closet. You battle it out? I'll give you an example. So you're my enemy. I know you have the upper hand. And if you and I were in a gunfight... You would lose. I would lose. And you're more tactical than I am. In a traditional sense. Okay. Okay? But if, if, if we decide, if, if somebody says, you guys, Squid Games, you guys are enemies, go. Okay? What I'm going to do is, what you didn't see beforehand is that your lady and I, we get to know each other. I break her walls down because I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, what's the word? I'm charming. You kill me. So far, this story's checking out. Nine months later, you guys celebrate the birth of your beautiful baby boy. But you know that's not happening. But I'm just saying, your things your happen 70. because accidents You're happen. You're in your 70s. No, no, no. You're no, not no. fertile. No, anymore. no. No, I pack heat. And that's the other thing. No. Yeah. Pack, like ED. Pack no, dead. No, I packed. packed no, no, no. I heat. pack heat. And you, you celebrate the birth of your, your baby boy, and I'm de long dead. And you guys are excited. And then about when the kid's about 11, 12, 13, you realize he's got my face and my sense of humor. Why would I have so to wait I that won. long? You see, what I, you see what I'm saying? So I won. So that, that, that's an example of asymmetrical warfare. You won by dying. <laughs> but, but I'm rebirthed. <laughs> but I'm rebirthed. <laughs> so you have to raise me. God, that's very... You're uh, attached to me now. Now you killed... You, 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 you love this, this my, essentially, my blueprint more than you love yourself, and that's how I get into your heart. So you see what I'm saying? It's very like Maoist and long-term Chinese philosophy and forward thinking generationally. I studied Wu Wei. Wu Wei is the art of uh, effort without effort. What's the one you buy stuff from, Huawei? <laughs> Huawei, not to be kissed with Huawei. Speaking of your clan, they're back. My, my clan is back. I, I found being a father to be not very exciting until you're like three or four years old. Yeah, that's that my buddy, um, Frank Grillo, 
the actor said, yeah. my, my first baby was born. He goes, how's the baby, Bubba? Don't worry, you're not supposed to have any feelings for the kid till like, she's at least six months old. And it was just so funny. I because, would talk to the child and get no response. Yeah. I would like roll a ball directly at him and it'd either bounce off or go by with zero effort put in on their side. It's- I think that's, that's evolutionary. I think that, I think men probably evolved that way because when the baby was born, it's so helpless and you've got to go out. You've got to be willing to go out and feed that baby. So if you were a caveman, you couldn't be sitting there all cooey cooey. In fact, they've, they've proven that women produce massive amounts of oxytocin which is a bonding chemical with their child. And, and, and when they look at that child's face, it produces endorphins in their, in, in their body. Not so with men. It's not the same physiological reaction. It just isn't. You know, a man's got to be willing to, you know, get the fuck out of the house and go find food or go find... I mean, that, that, that would make sense from an from a evolutionary perspective. Or to train warriors, which brings us right back on topic. Yes, because you have to understand that there are... There's a tribe over there that wants to take what belongs to you. So we're hunters, we're providers, and we're protectors. You understand? So I you gotta so. go you gotta be able to go out there and get them while they sleep, which is why you want to sleep during the day and work at night. That sounds exhausting. I know. And your tan would suck. <laughs> your tan sucks. Your tan sucks. Yeah. Your tan sucks. I know. What do you think about when you're at the threshold of the door, ready to make entry, your mortal enemy is in there. First off, talk me through your gear selection. A lot of people don't know about this, but you've been consulting with JSOC for quite some time now. Yeah. I would say from the earliest the earliest inception of, for reasons that we don't have to get into for yeah. sensitivity issues. Yeah, Bre- breaching a door is, is a whole art form. I mean, it's, it's its own martial art, to be completely honest with you. And I've worked with Tim Kennedy and guys, and I've, I've, I've done CQB. For you civilians, that's close quarter combat. Um, you got to sweep a CQB room. CQB stands for close quarters combat. Yeah, close quarter combat. So C Q C Q B close quarters. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the Just close quarter combat. Yeah. Maybe C Q C. That would be I'm, that would be sure. C Q C. You can describe it how you want close to in your term. Com- quarters. Battalion. I was in a. I was in a close. So if you're in close quarters battalion, you practice yeah. close quarter combat. And gotcha. so I, sorry, I made those. It mistakes. would be an MOS or a specialty, perhaps. That's an MOS. Okay. What now, are you thinking at the threshold of the door? Though? So, so let's say you approach a door. Yeah. What's the first thing that you're doing? So it's a very interesting because the way you guys would do it, the conventional way, is to flashbang and then to. Charge through the door and don't you think you should sweep the room? Open it first. You don't want to open the door. Sometimes you can open the door, but usually how do you, you wanna, get the flashbang in the room? You want to you want to you want to burst the door open with what? With a usually C four. C four. Yeah, really. It depends. Yeah, you like, want to do like an M one twelve block. It just it, you know it, it all really depends on how thick the door is. Sure. Right? How much C four would you go with on this? So so it, it, so again, uh, I'm talking about what you guys do. So what I do is I, I, I come with a lock pick, mm-hmm. uh, a kit, a lock pick kit, a lock pick kit. Yeah. So an LPK, right? Yep. Right? And so rather than, see, the difference between what you guys do is everything is so fucking loud and obvious, not to be a jerk, but you're bringing a lot of attention. Okay? Yeah. And you come in. Our milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Your you milkshake will. brings all the boys to the yard. And I come in with my lock pick kit with my LPK, Mm -hmm. okay? And then I don't understand. I truly, this is really serious. I truly don't understand why you guys don't think outside the box when it comes to clearing a room, okay? Well, we got to get into the room first. What are you doing with this LPK? You open the door very fucking quietly. And by the way, what do you do when you encounter, all you need is a tiny crack in the door. What do you do when you encounter a non-Western door, which almost all doors overseas yes, are? Yes, thank you for answering, asking that question. Yeah, so thank how does you your lock picking kit work? So this is a beautiful question, and I'm glad you asked. So that's why you have a silent drill. Okay? <laughs> yeah. What's the point of the LPK if you have a silent drill? Because you carry both. Yeah. Okay? What are you drilling into? So, excellent question. So you have various bits, okay? Yeah. And that's so reasonable. I need so so to clear a room, and this is going to surprise you. you I need get a hole. The room I need a hole about the size of a silver dollar at the most. Why? 
How do I clear a room? What am I using to clear a room? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So um, you go in with a, with, a, with a flashbang grenade or you go in with all your guys. In the 90s, maybe. Sure. But moving on. Sure. <laughs> a one I, banger? I carry, banger? Nine I banger? carry, I, and I know oh, this is going to fucking, I, I, I carry mambas. I carry hornets. Don't release anything sensitive. That could currently still be used on a battlefield yes, somewhere. Yes, I won't. But what I do is black and green mambas are insanely, insanely aggressive. Okay? So are king cobras. So okay? it's mambas and cobras. Yeah, it and depends. Hornets. It just depends. It depends on the climate. So some snakes are more sensitive to climate. If I'm in a cold area, obviously we're going to have an issue. But for the most part, what I'm going to do is those are not just regular mambas or cobras. What I do is if I'm in a certain part of the world and there's a certain kind of person, I'm going to show them pictures of what would be a typical person of that country. Super racist. It's very racist. Yeah. But the cobra or the mamba will see that picture or flashes of those or video of those faces. And there's a small electric current. I'm not going to hurt the snake too badly, but it's going to be very uncomfortable. So the snake is going to associate pain with those faces. I release a mamba into that room. You see a mamba come into the room, guess what? You clear the room. You're you assuming I'm awake. Room. You clear the room. What's that? You're assuming I'm awake. Well. Let's talk about this scenario where you're at the front door and it's just like a mud room. Yeah. And the, and the following door is closed. Yeah, that's right. Because that's why I bring, and that's why I bring firecrackers. Okay. Yeah. What do you, how do you prevent the snake from biting your interpreter? What's that? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. The Good interpreter question. that looks almost exactly like everybody that's else. That's an excellent could be on question. Yeah. That's an excellent question. So I, I guess you don't know much about snakes. So you carry them in Accurate. a bag. You carry them in a bag, in a black, in a dark bag, mm -hmm. and they go dormant. They go dormant. Yeah. So you drill a hole into. Yes. At any time, are you just checking to see if the door is unlocked? First of all, I might pick it. It depends on the kind of door, right? Are you even going to check to see if it's unlocked at all? Huh? Yeah, I am. Yeah, Thank that, you. That actually should be the first That's move. always the first move. How can you tell which direction a door opens? But you're forgetting about windows, dude. Not at all. We haven't gotten to windows yeah. yet. No, but how, how can you tell the direction that the door opens? How do you tell the direction? Yeah. The doors always open into the house, into the Oh, is, is that yeah. so? Yeah. Is Depending there anything? on what country and what latitude you're at. Okay. Yeah. So that's fascinating because that hasn't been my experience at all. Are there yeah, any sometimes doors external will come visual out this way. ways you can just look at and assess a door to tell what which there direction are. Opens? How are the, the, yeah, the ways you do that? You look at the hinges. Correct. Yeah. Does it open towards or away from right. the hinges? So typically, it's going to where in what part of the world? You tell me. North America. North America is going to open towards you. Okay, and in the Middle East, that's going to open towards you as well. Okay. How about Australia? That's probably going to be. It, depending on where, like in Perth and places, that's going to open towards you. So everywhere so far, it just opens towards you, which is the correct answer. Doors always yeah, open always towards always, hinges. Yeah. Okay. Always open towards you. You've successfully made it into the mudroom, and there's another door, and yeah. now there's snakes on the floor. What yes. do you do? So the snakes are there to get people to run out the other exit. There's nobody in this room, though. Excellent. E excellent. There's nobody in that room. Because it's just a mud room. Yes. 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 That's right. So, so now you have a hole in the first door, which yeah. you made noise. There's snakes on the yes. floor. Yes. Well, no. Okay. So you drill a hole in the first door and you have a small camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Prior to the snakes. Yes. Okay. You stick a tiny camera in the door or you attach a camera to a non-poisonous snake. Like a garden snake. Yes, or a boa. I prefer working with boas. So now the boa walks, goes will in Will that there. fit through the small silver dollar size? Of hole? course it will. So you can use a rat, you know, but you attach a small camera to said animal. And the animal then is going to be walking through. Nobody notices a rat or, or, or a boa constrictor. They're very silent. But um, you're going to get an, a sweeping idea of what the... See, you guys don't use animals enough. You use dogs, but you don't, you don't use smaller animals. You can train a rat, by the way. Um, to do what? To, to just just walk into a room and yeah I know I know just walk know. into a room and look in all the corners and survey. Well, around. the rat's going to just do its thing, but you're going to have the kind of camera that kind of does a 360 swoop. So you have a rotating camera. They make cameras for clarity that can just see 360 this as is, opposed to rotating. We're in 2023, buddy. I know. So, yeah, this, so there's te that technology. Um, now, now if there are people in the room, the mambas follow. Here's the problem with mambas. They are dangerous and they could bite somebody. 
And if they bite a high value target that you'd rather interrogate, you got a big problem. Carry antivenom, obviously, in case. But this is where, in my opinion, hornets are really effective because hornets are going to fly into the room. And the, the minute you see hornets, what's the first thing you do when you see like seven, 10 hornets fly into the room, especially murder hornets? You fucking get out. You get out. And you can predict where they're going to get out. You, you, you have other men stationed at the other entry, exit portals. We portals? Them, yeah. We call them All right. EPs. Exit. exit and entry points? Exit portals. Portals, okay. EPs. So, so again, so I guess I'm not going to get into detail because you're asking me to do a lot of detail. So uh, snakes and hornets will clear a room faster than a bunch of Navy SEALs. Okay, snakes and hornets, and nobody gets hurt. Okay, so you don't have to breach Except the maybe door. The people in the room. Well, the people in the room are the people that are my target. So if you get stung a bunch of times, sorry, but don't fuck with the U.S. military. Right? Fair. You shouldn't have been a bad boy in the first place. All right. Uh, and and snakes typically will come in, but they're not going to attack you. But they're gonna they're gonna you see a snake and you're getting the fuck out of there. So that's that's really how you clear a room, in my opinion. What if it's a hostage rescue? By the way, rats are not a bad idea. A lot of people are afraid of rats. Yeah, but they would also have to battle the rats that are already on target. I know, but listen. So when you go into a room and there are a bunch of women and children there and the high-value target is using women and children as a shield, you release a couple of rats and women and children tend to run away from rats. Now, they leave the room, but the guy goes, I'm not afraid of a rat. Bingo. And now we're in. Right? Make sense? I can't even think of how many times that scenario has not played itself out. I know. (laughs) <laughs> That's right, because you're conventional. Okay. Right. Hostage rescue. Time is of the essence. Jesus, yeah. You don't have really time to drill holes in the wall yes. and insert your battalion of mambas and hornets. Yeah. What are you going with? What are you thinking? So, so how many hostages? How many? Two. How many, how many hostage takers? 20. 20 hostage takers. See, this is better for me, because you can clump them. Clump right? them? Yeah, okay. you clump them. You get them in clumps. How do you do that? Right? You stack them up. You stack them up. How do you stack okay. them up? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> These are good questions. <laughs> but you want to stack them up. So, so typically when you got 20 guys, they're not paying attention to their hostages and the hostages are just sitting down. And the hostages are very docile because they know that there's no point in trying to run away because they're it's 20 to 2. So you're giving me a pretty easy scenario here. Okay. Now you can use the same technique. You can use mambas and hornets to get all of them to come out one gateway. They're all going to be running, and then you got them clumped up and bang, 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 bang. Okay, and then you pick them off from there. Um, but for the most part, for the most part, you essentially want to create some chatter, some noise that's just low enough. For them to be like, what is that? Like a tap on a window. There you go. On a wall, not a window. On a wall. Because the like window, a, they're going to see like that. a foot-thick mud wall. Yes, yeah, so you want to create... use for that? So it's, it, you want to hear... And, then, and then what you would do is you would have something... Let's say it was in a country where people are rather religious. You might have the faint sound of prayers. In the middle of the night. Yes. Or just an eerie song. Penetrating a mud wall. I don't think it'll go through a wall. Uh-huh. He, well, <laughs> but you use sound, sound piercing technologies, right? Okay. And also, you can drill into the wall with a silent bit, bit not all the way through. Multiple uses for one tool. Yes, Perfect. and then you send the sound waves through that little hole. So they go like this. What is that? I don't know. And everybody puts their ear to the wall. Yeah, they just forget why they're there, and they go listen to the wall. And then you blast the wall out. But how do you not kill the hostage? So... Good. Good. That's a very good question. What charge would you use on that wall? Say there wasn't a hostage anyway. So that's a little bit classified, right? Sure. Right? But it's going to be in the C4 with a, family. Paint right? with a broom. How much C4 would you use? Yeah. That's uh, like probably the equivalent of a cigarette box. A cigarette box? Yeah. Of C4 that you would plaster to the wall. And then... Throw so the- how many cigarette boxes would you use? Because that amount would probably... Make a small dent. So, so, so you have to understand, I, I have eyes on the room through a window, typically. Okay. Okay. Because so, there's always a window. Yes. Yeah, so when 
they are pressing their ear against the wall because you see, human beings are very curious and then they're paranoid and they're like, what's that sound, right? What's that sound? And then they all go and everybody goes, see if you can see what that sound is and everybody wants to be the one who can figure it out. So now you got everybody pushing their ear against the fucking wall, right? Then you blow a, a You blow their cigarette. eardrum out. You blow their fucking eardrum out with a massive bang that also crumbles the wall. But a cigarette box of C4 isn't going to make a massive bang. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you're still left with how do you crater the wall? How many M112 blocks would you use? So, good question. I, I'm sure you're familiar with the standard M112 C4 block, which is what weight again? Yeah. The pound, M112? The pound M112? and... Uh, yes, yes, yes. So the M112 C4 yeah. block? So that's typically M112. Pound and... Uh, so M112 is 12, 12 ounces, so... Usually, typically. 12 ounces is under a pound. Under a pound. Yeah, but 16 ounces uh, is a pound. Pound and a quarter. What color is the wrapping on that particular? It just depends. So, again. It doesn't, though. It doesn't. (laughs) What color is the wrapping on that whole block? So, so you want the kind of wrapping that blends with your surroundings. It only comes in one color. Yes, sometimes it's red, I've heard. No, yeah, it's not true. It depends on what country you're in. Not the Who's who's wrapping it? Like, where'd you buy your seat? And then 1-12 blocks is going to come from the U.S. military. One color and one color only. Yes. And it is green. It is green, actually. Yeah. Dark like your shirt. Yes, green. <laughs> That's moss green. Moss green. So probably more of an OD. Yeah. All, known as olive drab. Yeah. Anyway, um, so again, clump clump them. You clump if you clump the host, the hostage takers, you can you can use your room your room room. Yeah. So you know what a room room is? It's a shotgun. It's a shotgun. Yeah. What it's kind a tactical, of, uh, it's a tactical shotgun. What would you have? What kind of load would you have in that particular? So in, in uh, close range, I'm using scatter scatter shot. I'm using bird like bird shot. shot. I'm using bird shot. So you're there just I'm to irritate them. No, no, no. I'm a close up there, and it's going right. It's going right in the old eyes. Okay. So now you're blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's <laughs> so we're difference. talking yeah. inside a five yard eye shots with yeah, bird shot. Yeah, but I, I'm going to say this, and I shouldn't say this. I'm going to say this that you guys another thing you guys don't use. It's unbelievable to me. It, it really is. I think that the U.S. military, well, okay, how do I word this? I have no fucking idea why you guys don't use automatic tranquilizer dart guns. Probably because they don't exist. I know. Exactly. Until they do, right? Until DARPA goes, here you go, right? So... Right now, you got to use tranquilizer dart guns that you get for elephants and rhinos and tigers. Wait, do we, though? Right. Do yeah. we have to use those? Well, so if I want... You know that it doesn't knock them out instantaneously, right? Not that I've ever used a dart gun. Right. But there's a, ma- a moment of time and mm-hmm. moments of time where they're still very functional. That's fine. That's fine, because it's a matter of time. You play the waiting game. So what you do... What if they kill the hostage in the meantime while you're playing the ma- waiting game? <sighs> yes. It's a conundrum. Question. Because a lot of times what you can do is shoot the hostage with the tranquilizer gun. It's very quiet. Okay. The hostage kills over. He thinks the hostage is dead. And he wouldn't have any like, and when question or concern. And the hostage, you shoot him in the throat. And if you shoot somebody in the throat with a tranquilizer gun, it works faster. So, Based off of the documentary Old School? What are we talking about here? So based off of things, off of training. Off of training. So if you're shooting a tiger or an elephant, you get it in the neck. Why? Because the neck is closest to the head. That, that part is accurate. So it takes less time. But what if you miss the jugular and it just goes into the flesh? I don't miss the jugular. Okay. All right? And by the way, you don't have to hit the jugular. Okay. It's subcutaneous. It's, it's, there are muscle penetrators that... All right. So let's say you successfully clump a half a dozen of them together... Yeah. What, what's your? What are you going with after that? You're you're on a so, tier one. Tranquilizer darts are. It's. I really truly don't understand why why you don't use tranquilizer darts. You shoot enough guys with a tranquilizer dart. You spray a room with tranquilizer darts. Everybody's going to sleep, and now you just cuff them and you throw them on a bird. Uh, sorry, a chopper, and uh, and now you got a helicopter. A helicopter, and uh, <laughs> and now you've got all your all your targets. Um, they're asleep. They wake up, and in, you can get all your information from them. And more importantly, you can re-educate them. So this just goes back. We full circle now. You have your 
you could fly that helicopter to wherever you have your interrogation unit full of your all-stars and just pick the tools that work the best depending yes. on what you have. All right. Yes, schools in session. So when you when you are put through four years of school, you're going to come out with a different point of view on who the enemy is. So we're going to re-educate. What school are we talking about? The school we're going to put them through? Yes. Okay. Yes, terrorist retraining school. Hmm. So, so why wouldn't you ever use a tranquilizer dart? Because they don't work. And that idea is absolutely no, fucking stupid. No, don't say it's stupid. <laughs> tranquilizer darts work on elephants. They're going to work on a human. You shoot somebody okay. in the ass with a tranquilizer dart, they're going to go to sleep. Eventually. And you didn't have to kill them. It's actually a good fucking idea, and you know this. You know that. It's quiet no, as the, shit. The theory quiet that we as don't shit. Be, is it, though? So quiet. Tranquilizer darts? So you're talking a shoulder-fired tranquilizer dart with, like, a CO2 or, cartridge? <clears throat> or you just... You just said automatic tranquilizer dart gun. You, I would. I would use an automatic So that, you could probably do that like an airsoft gun. It could be battery Thank powered. You. It's still going to be loud. It's not going to be loud, dude. It's a, it's... <clears throat> I'm talking about the automatic one. Reloading a blow dart gun is a bad... <laughs> it's not going to be mouth-fired. But that's about how loud they are. You don't know that because this doesn't exist. You don't know that I don't know that. We'll have to agree to disagree. Okay, but it's, it's surprising to me. It's, it's actually astonishing that you, you guys in the units, in these tip of the spear units, don't use tranquilizer. You're units. the one who consults with the units, not me. So you're going to have to take this to a higher level. Yeah, it's, it's stupid. What do you think people don't understand about being a soldier like yourself in the special operations community? Allegedly. What's the biggest Allegedly. misconception? Allegedly. Yeah. You're a special operations adjacent. Yeah. Um, I think people don't realize how glamorous it actually is. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing about just the, the spotlight, of, the international the cocktail paparazzi. parties you go to, women. How do you like to be introduced at a cocktail party? Because um, you don't want to be specific. Yeah. But you don't want to be too broad. Yeah. What's your What's your preference? Well, why don't you ask me what I did in the military, Brian? What What did you do in the military? This and that. <laughs> Where? Lots of different places. What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? What's the scariest thing that didn't happen to me is a better question. Right? You see what I mean? Yeah. So you're... you're deflect. Yeah, you deflect. Yeah. You right. deflect. Fair enough. Right? Or, or um, aren't, we you, all, aren't we all always afraid? You know? That's fair. Or, or if, I, if I want to charm somebody, you know... Um, well, I've never been as scared as I am now. You are astonishing looking. And that's how you do it. So, so again, you're always circumventing. You're all, so if, you, if you're a boxer, if you're, if, you're a, if you're an MMA fighter or anything else, or you're jiu-jitsu, you want to you wanna work angles. I'm not coming straight at you. I'm always working an angle. I'm going to arm drag you. I'm going to jump to the side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to attack the body, then the chin. I want to take your back if I'm jiu-jitsu. I want to get behind you. It's the same idea, dude. It's the same idea. That's my problem with breaching a door. That's my problem with coming straight in, right? Let something or someone else do it for you. Use human psychology. You got to shoot somebody, use a tranquilizer dart. They'll fall asleep. It's a lot easier. Then they wake up. What's your preferred loadout? My preferred loadout? Mm Mm-hmm. Because like, I, I know you were training with uh, Tim Kennedy a month or so yes. ago down in Texas. You told yes. a story about basically how you got yourself self stuck in a vehicle. We don't have to go into details on yeah. that because it's quite embarrassing. But no, it was a bullshit holster and it was a bullshit fucking car too. It's you know why were you wearing a bullshit holster? Because uh, because of Jeff Gonzalez, uh, who's who is a former SEAL, and Tim. He forced and you to wear a bullshit. They gave me a bullshit belt and bullshit holster because they they're, they just wanted to fuck with me. Mm-hmm. I would never wear a holster like that. So. What would you wear? I don't wear a holster. That's Where dumb. do you carry your side? I carry it in right here. Boom, right there. Small your back? Yep. And I carry two two short katanas in right here across this way. If you were in a vehicle like yeah. the one that you were in with Tim, then you're carrying a pistol in the small of your back and two katanas on your back. How yeah. could you access them while seated? Well, Tim, I mean, well, uh, Andy, um, th- th- that's something you train for. Right? I understand training for, yeah. but you're actually out of real estate. So you're assuming that I carry no knives or guns in my boots. 
I, I carry no. I, I don't carry. I don't carry a gun on my on my fucking calf. I asked you what your okay, loadout so, was, so, so, and but you said a pistol in the small of your back. That's and two one, katanas. That's the, the and and then I'm I'm also strapped to other places, such as such as my so on my right side, on my right calf, I have a piece. What I keep I keep a Walter PPK. Okay, like right? in a sock. What are we talking? Here? No, neoprene dude, holster. It's strapped to my fucking. It's strapped to my. It's. A custom-made holster. It's basically a band that's tied around my calf. Yeah. Right. Nylon band. Yes. And then on the other side, I have a boot knife. Okay. You don't ever wear boots, though. I know. But it's a boot knife, isn't it? Okay. Right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sheathless dagger. A sheathless, it's sheathless dagger that you keep in your boot and don't cut yourself with? I keep it against my fucking calf Yeah. with a band. Got me? Not really, because you're still going to cut the ever living shit Until out of the band. Until you practice not doing that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what was the drill that Tim had you doing? Tim had me extracting from a car. I was extracting. You were from extracting a car. from a car or exiting from a car. So we say it's extracting. You have to extract from the car. And I think you're confusing like extricate, which is something that first responders do to people stuck in that's cars, right. and exiting, which is where somebody like yourself could just open the door and get out. You can exit, yes, but I will slide on my stomach a lot. So if I'm going downstairs, you practice sliding on your stomach downstairs. Instead of running painful. downstairs, it's not painful if you wear a front a front sled, a frontal sled. Like a plastic snow, like down you, snow ski? Yeah, well you wear a Kevlar sled, so mm. so you have a you have sort of a I mean it's basically it's basically a hard piece of Kevlar that kind of, a smooth piece of Kevlar that comes all the way down to the groin. And that way you can just dive downstairs. Okay. Right? I mean, so there's I always el- so right, elbow but... pads, elbow pads, a frontal sled, and all Kevlar and knee pads. Back to the vehicle. And, and so are you, are you wearing this in this strong. vehicle? You're always wearing it. If I'm on, if I'm on, if I, if, uh, in my opinion, if I think if you're, if you're on mission, and you're on target, or you're, 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 you know, you you want to, if you're deployed to target, you want your your kit is gloves, tight fitting gloves, elbow pads, knee pads, Kevlar sled, Kevlar sled, okay, front and back. <sighs> what are you using for ballistic protection? See, it depends on if I'm riding a motorcycle. Then I want the back, but for the most part. I'm going to just wear a frontal sled. Do you wear back plates, ballistic plates? So, good question. They usually are part of my rucksack that I wear. The rucksack. Yes. Ruck, it's R-U-K. Yes. But rook is... So, R-U-U-K is the Dutch. It, but it's not, though. No. So, it comes probably from... No. It's ruck. Holland originally. Like fuck, but with an R. Yes. Rucksack. No, I know. Okay. But Rook is how we pronounce Perfect. it in Holland. And so if you were wearing your rucksack, you don't wear uh, ballistic plates in the back? I do, but you see, you have to understand that I'm not worried about my back. Because, so, all the ground I cover, so all the ground I cover, I'm going to clear. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not taking a step forward until I know that everything behind me is no longer a threat. How do you make sure that things don't come from in front of you and end up behind you? So again, another thing I'm amazed you guys don't do, which is actually astonishing to me, is why in the fuck you don't have a guy who is tied, his back is tied to your back. Like Thunderdome. Yes. And so as I'm running, he's covering my back. Would you do that with... A smaller person? Always a smaller person. Always a small person. I don't know. Somebody I can carry on my back sometimes, but I, 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 I don't like doing that because that'll weigh me down. So I like somebody who can run as fast as I can forward as, they, as backwards. But you want it to be a smaller person? Yeah, typically. Okay. I just want them good with a gun. Okay. Or a triangleizer gun, sorry. So you have gloves, elbow pads, knee pads... Front, Kevlar Ke- sled. Kevlar sled. Body sled. Body yeah. sled. You have a rucksack on that apparently has a small person in it with... Well, not in it. Not in it. How? Just attached to the outside of it. 
I don't because so, I need that, my supplies. I need a rucksack work. in the. I need putting my, a person on the fabric edge of a backpack. They're just going to be all over the place. No, they need but, to be in it. I'm not putting somebody in my fucking rucksack, dude. I'm not putting. A you're just going to strap them to the yeah, outside of it. I, I'm not putting. A, you're saying what you're really saying is why don't you have a killer dwarf in your fucking rucksack? That's, that's, that's what you're picturing. Not, that's not and, what I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm fucking saying. <laughs> and I I love that idea. Yeah. And you can use a killer dwarf. You can use one. And I would say yes. The problem is that it's hard for someone who is of that stature to shoot the kind of weaponry you need. Uh, what are they going to shoot when they're attached to the outside of your backpack swinging all over the place? No, you have somebody who basically is is running backwards and touching your back. You don't have to have them attached. They're just... But we, you said it was a small person. So they, they wouldn't be touching your back. A smaller a, person. In smaller. Case, yeah. Yeah, in case... See, that doesn't work if you go down, though, because then they're smaller dragging you or carrying you. It'd be much easier for you to carry them than vice versa. Yes, that's right. I know that. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of that. And it would take years of synchronized footwork to be able to run like that. Well, that's why we train, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we train. It's kind of a dance, isn't it? So Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly did everything Fred Astaire did backwards and in heels. Is it true? Yes. Why? Because that's how you dance. So as Fred Astaire's dancing forward, she's got to dance backwards. I guess she's got to do everything he does backwards and heels. It's all about training, my friend, which is why dance is such an important part of training. And that's probably where you get a lot of the combat footwork that you would use. That's exactly right. What's your favorite footwear on that topic for combat? Oh, fuck. It's such a hard question, man. I mean, moccasins, moccasins, obviously, mm. because you learn how to not break a twig under your feet. Yeah. But what about when you step on sharp metal things? Well, okay. No, it's a good question. So you typically have on the end of your feet. Steel toe moccasins? No. You have, see, it's amazing to me. The way you think, the way you think, it's always like, oh, I, gotta, I gotta knock it out of the way. What I was do you thinking have? toe protection. I'm sorry? I was thinking of toe protection. No, dude. So it's very simple. You don't need steel toes. When you wear your moccasins or any kind of shoes, if you're worried about things and you have soft under, you have, say, let's say you have deer skin under your feet, right? And you're worried about sharp metal objects. That's why you put magnets on the end of the moccasins, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the, the metal gets stuck to the end of your moccasins and yeah. it clears the path. And what if it's a piece of rebar that's like buried underground, two thirds of it are buried underground and the magnet's not pulling shit on that? I don't go to areas where there's rebar. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you're super limited to nowhere on Earth? <laughs> it's a good question. But, so, you didn't even let me finish my sentence. First of all, I would wear moccasins if I'm fighting in a forest. Or okay. in a wooded area. Right? Because there's never any metal there. So there's a, there's a saying, ninjas hate crunchy leaves. <laughs> Right? Fair. Okay. Right. I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that saying. I'm going to go ahead and... Ninjas hate crunchy leaves. I can imagine they do. Yeah. And... Uh, How old were you when you realized ninjutsu was bullshit? <laughs> I think I was like nine. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, I, I, when, I, when I tried to use it on a guy who was a wrestler... Did I'd you hear Glover on Joe's podcast recently talking... In all seriousness, that the first martial arts training that he did, yes, I did, was ninjutsu yes, from a I green did. beret. Yes, I did. God damn it, I did. And I wanted to, I wanted to call in. I wanted to call in my podcast and go, Mike, stop talking about ninjutsu right now. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it just shows you that incredibly intelligent people can be fucking swindled. If well, he was a kid. Time. He was fourteen, and he I'm was, not talking about him. Took... I'm talking about the green beret. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a teacher. But that and was back a in the day when you were taught like to you you attack the throat. You know, you, you, there are pressure points that you can debilitate somebody. If you try that one time, though, you know it doesn't work. Yeah, you have to fight. It's why you have to spar and you have to. That's that's why. Like if you if you said that to a wrestler, even a high school wrestler, they would go, "I don't think so, dude. I don't know." In the heat of combat, I'm so going to those... double leg you, pick you up, and throw you on the ground. How but does that shit survive? Because, how does the because, fake dojo because there are survive? so many people that have never done any kind of combat sport. So I, I believe that. Yeah. 
But but even in Taekwondo. But you watch shit like the McDojo where the fat dude in the middle just spins in circles and moves his shoulders and people fall down. Yeah. I don't care if you've never done a combat sport. Right. Why are you falling down? Because those days are gone. (laughs) They're not. No, no, no. But those days. So um, it's, it's anytime you have a sharp profile and lost people, they want so badly to just be part of a community that they will fall down. It's a, it's a, it's called group hypnosis. Very common. It's why Jim Jones was able to get everybody to drink the Kool-Aid. And there are classic examples of that. There are plenty of very lost people. All you have to do is spend enough time in an acting class, enough time in, in wherever it is. What are those and you will like? find people like that. What is it? What is acting, acting classes? class like? Well, I was in an amazing acting class with amazing teachers, but I have to say that I spent a lot of time in that class, uh, maybe even longer than I should have because I cannot stop watching a train wreck. It's, it's, was it just the wildest shit you've ever seen? Yeah, because acting is the one thing that you can do forever and delude yourself into believing that there's still a chance. What most acting teachers should do is they should look at people and go, hey, you, you got to quit. It's never going to work out. Yeah, that's not how they make their living. Yeah, but the problem is that there's no way. It's like quarterbacks in the NFL. You don't know. When you watch a quarterback in college, you actually don't know what they're going to be like when they perform in the pros. And you don't know who is going to be a movie star. You don't know. It has it, it, it looks, talent. You don't know. Some people just have something, or they just the right things fall into place. Whatever it might be, and boom, it just kind of happens. What do you think of the portrayal of soldiers in Hollywood? The portrayal of soldiers, well, and, and just in war in general. Yeah. Well, nowadays um, there are a lot of guys that are learning how to shoot. Because they have guys like you who teach them how to shoot. And, you know, there are a lot of guys. The technology has allowed actors to really put on a lot of muscle quickly. Right? By technology, you mean steroids? I would say that. Okay, yeah. just checking. And then you're... there. <laughs> and, fuck you talking And about? then we've got great lighting and the right kind of shirt that gets ripped at the right... In the right areas. Well, and don't forget the sets of push-ups and whatever they're doing right before they say action. Always right before. You yeah. want to get yourself pumped. I get it. That's what yes. they're there to sell. Not judging it whatsoever. They still, though, use... They're always on automatic. Unless you're Alec Baldwin. Single shot. You know yeah, what I'm saying? very confusing to me. Is it, though? Well... I didn't pull the trigger. I only cocked the hammer and let it go. Like, that's actually the same thing. That is the same thing. Yeah. Well, especially on a six-year. But that's an example of a guy who's not educated when it comes to guns. If you educate yourself, if you shoot fucking guns, if, if see, it's, it's so important to, uh, to at least understand a little bit about the world of violence. It's why I put myself in those positions. People think I like... Yeah, I want to. I want to be a little bit familiar because you will sink to the level of your training. You're not going to rise. No one rises. You sink hey, to the level of your training. Fa- I said, yeah. You don't rise to the occasion. You fall to the level of your training every single fucking time. Yeah. And I don't care who you are. You're always terrified. And, but- I, and I'll add to that. It's not the training on your best day. You're going to fall to probably your performance on an average or below average day. Of course. But everybody thinks that there, if you, again, if you don't put yourself in those objective situations where you come into contact with objective reality, when, you know, you, you, you learn a move, say, in jujitsu or wrestling, and you're like, oh, underhooks, that's how underhooks work. So I'm going to get a high underhook here, and I pull you down. Then somebody goes, yeah, I know, but I'm going to push your face. And you're like, oh, fuck, there goes that. You know, there's a thousand counters to that yeah. in real time. And unless you have drilled that in real time, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. You can learn patterns with boxing. Somebody can say, all you got to do is you pin that right hand, pin, pin their right hand, and then, then dig to the body. Go ahead. Yeah. See what happens when the guy's punching you in the face. There's just a thousand things that can go wrong. And the only way to train for that is at full speed. It's the only way. You, you can't do it any other way. You can drill, but you can't, you know, drilling is very important. In general, but if you're not live training as much as possible, you're 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 lying to yourself. Do you think that it's fair that Alec Baldwin was charged with manslaughter? No. So so here's I've done enough shooting on film sets and TV sets. Typically, the prop person 
who's responsible. It's a different kind. Usually the prop guy and the person responsible. I think they call them the arm, armor. Yep, they yeah. provide the actual weaponry. Yeah. They, they really understand their guns, okay? And they will almost always show you. I've never had it otherwise. They show you the weapon. They show you that it's, that they'll show you the, they'll pull the slide back. They show you that it's empty. Mm -hmm. uh, then they show you that, you know, a thousand things. And then they take the gun away from you right away. You're never holding the gun unless you're ready to shoot. Then if there and is a charge. Shoot, you mean film. By film, but also shoot the gun. Okay. Now, when you're going to shoot, they will show you also that it, they'll explain to you it's a blank. They, they, they say fire in the hole. You have a fa safety meeting beforehand. Mm. And if you're going to shoot at, a, at the camera, typically there is a, a plexiglass in front of it and the camera operators are not there. They yeah, lock the camera off. Yeah, it's remote. Right. So all of it's very confusing to me. Now, my guess is that that gun was a wheel gun, mm -hmm. and they had to see the bullets in the, in the wheel. That's my guess. Well, first off, how the fuck did a live round even make it anywhere with That is the craziest shit set. I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. It, it is, that's where the criminality comes in, it's criminal negligence. Now, the armorer was a young lady. Her father, I believe, was a very experienced armorer. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think that they were trying to check boxes at the time. There was a lot of pressure for film sets. As in diversity boxes? Yes. Film sets to get people in there. Let's get a woman armor in there and stuff like that. Bad fucking idea. That's why when it comes to surgeons, armorers, soldiers, it's about fucking competence. Not checking a box, you dumb fucks. My flight control person, the person responsible for making sure the planes that land are in a different area than the planes that take off, I want the best person for the job. I do not give a fuck what color they are. I don't care how they identify. Did you pass the test? And I want that test to be really hard. Yeah, not did you pass really it, hard. did you ace it. Did you fucking ace it. Top performer. B, you got a B, get the fuck out of here. B plus, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. A minus, no dice, take the test again. I want A pluses across the board, all right? And if it's all white straight males or all Native American males or all transgender people, I do not give a fuck. I want the best. And that, I think, is what was really going on. I might be wrong. That's my guess. But what... I can't fathom is how in the world you have this. I, I think somehow they were shooting live rounds out of that gun. It was a real gun and they were supposed to put blanks in there. Yeah. And somehow a real bullet got in there because nobody was paying attention. And which, that's on the second unit director. Insane to that's me. on the, that's on the AD. That's on the armor. That's on props. And, Finally, that's on Alec Baldwin. But, but Alec Baldwin had to have believed after all his years of experience that there's no fucking way there was a live round in that gun. That would never happen in Hollywood, ever. It's never happened. I, even when uh, uh, Bruce Lee's son died, it wasn't a live round. It was, it was a charge behind. They had a, they had a they slug. Had a dummy round. Yes. Where the projectile came off and was wedged in the chamber. Correct. Then a full load blank, which essentially turned the combination into a live yes. round. But so that's a freak a, accident. For sure. Avoidable, though, too, if you clear and safe at every time. And also, you, you never point the gun at. That's, that's the craziest part that he that's where how he pointed the gun That's at. where he falls into, again, I don't think it was uh, anything that he was intending to do. Of course not. But I also think that's where, you know, the difference between manslaughter and murder. Had he followed the most simple and basic rule of any <sighs> firearms never pointed at something you don't intend to kill. So in my experience on set... I think it's rude to do. Like, I would never point a toy I would gun fucking out. snatch it out of his hand if we were on set. But yeah. you, in my limited time on set, they did the same thing. They would, they would remotely control a camera and have plexiglass, which for clarity was to protect the hundreds of thousands of dollars of camera material. Yeah. And every other shot that they would do, they would walk through and make sure that regardless of the angle that they were shooting because they do need people to move their guns around, they would make sure that there was absolutely nobody downrange of that whatsoever. They would give them sight lines. They would give them something on the wall to point at. It was not fucked around with at all. Yeah. Fingers were never on the trigger. Weapons were yeah. never pointed at anybody or anything. Yeah. And they take the gun from you until you're ready to shoot. Yeah. Now, I think everybody, it sounds like you never know. I hate to say it, but you never know. Somebody might have said, 
can you, can we get a, can we get, you know, cause sometimes it's like, can you hold the gun up so we can see how that looks? Like how high do you have to hold the gun up? I bet you they didn't say, can you hold that up and fuck with the hammer though? No, but they might've said, Alec, can you hold the gun up here so that you go, can you low, you lower it a little bit. So when you bring it up, bring it here. Cause otherwise I can't see your face. Or hold it up here because the light hits it that way and I can see the dummies and rounds in there, whatever yeah. it is. So that's they're very possible that as they're locking camera off, you have people there to see, you have the DP there to see how where the gun should be held. That's very possible. So can you hold it up here? Hold here, hold here. Yeah. Now, I don't know if... You know, again, if you haven't shot guns, that gun was an old gun. It yeah. might have had, like, my dad has a 1911. When you touch that trigger, when you, I mean, you can touch it. You can put the weight of a feather on that trigger and it goes off. I don't like guns like that. If it's in single action, meaning yeah. the hammer's already back. That's right. That's right. With a wheel gun, and I'm not an expert on wheel guns, I don't know how far. So when you pull in the trigger, the hammer, you pull in the trigger, the hammer moves back. It reaches a point where it flies three, where it flies free. And it strikes the primer on the round and the round goes off. Yeah. So you could short, when he said, I didn't pull the trigger, that's actually possible because he could have just milked the hammer back. And I don't know how far you would have to for it to go off. But if it struck the primer with enough force, of course, the round is going to go off and it's going to be the live round that it was. Yeah. It's, what, it's the strangest fucking Do you thing. think it'll change anything in Hollywood? I, I don't think Hollywood needs any safety lessons. Hollywood is amazing. Hollywood is... Um, the I was people, very impressed in my limited experience. Oh, fucking the, the, the people that the crew, the people that make everything work are the most extraordinary people ever. If they ran this country, we'd have no problems. All they do is solve problems all day long. That's what they do. We have this joke. You had, you asked two crew, those crew guys, those experienced dudes. If you were like, I need to hang a white chocolate fucking unicorn from that rafter and I wanted to swing and I wanted to pierce some some corn. I wanted to pierce a stalk of corn or a sparrow as it flies by with its horn. He would go, ah, give me about a half hour. And they do it. Like they can do anything. They can solve all problems. And so I don't think Hollywood needs any, it, there's nothing to change. That was a freak accident. What you change is you you don't you don't get your silly diversity uh, politics into a situation where people can get killed. You fucking dummies. You get the best person for the job. You don't check a box. You don't go, well, we, we don't have enough people of color here. We don't have enough women. We don't have enough... Tri get the fuck out of here. A hierarchy of competence is what Hollywood's always been. It's great that we have, you know, that we've made it, we've expanded it, and there are more people because that's good for business. But keep it... Like, making movies is very fucking hard. And Hollywood does a pretty damn good job. What do you think about people pushing for more diversity in the military? Again, again, I, I think that the people doing this are a tiny, tiny group of people with outsized influence because, they, because nobody wants to push back because they don't know how. They don't know how to articulate the dangers of that without sounding racist or all, the, all of the above. It's very difficult to say, that's a bad idea, okay? It's a little bit like saying, how do you vote against the Patriot Act? Are you not a patriot? It's the same idea. So it's really important to understand how to articulate why to reframe the argument, to reframe the effort on your own terms with your own uh, terminology and then explain why that's a very bad idea or explain why that um, isn't going to make anybody or the world more diverse. You're not going to do that. The people pushing these kinds of agendas are not people who have diverse friends or live in a diverse world, world themselves. I'm sorry. Typically, they come out of universities that are very expensive to get into with very expensive walls that keep them away from everybody else, and they've never really worked in the real world. They sit around and they deconstruct what's wrong with a society they don't participate in, and they, make, they pay no price for being wrong. And that's my problem with academia. It just is. Super racist, but... That's, that's exactly right. What's the most deadly weapon that you've ever served with and carried? My heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to go with something like your brain. Yeah, no. Which would be a good answer, too. Yeah. It's probably the most dangerous weapon out there, the yeah. human brain. 
It might be. It might be, but it can also turn against you. You can become a snake eating your own tail. I've been thinking a lot about this. I'm thinking about a lot, a lot about how being a materialist is good, but it's not the end all and be all. You've got to be an anti-materialist in some way. So to explain all of life and all of its phenomenons, especially its joys and wonders, and re- Reduce, to try to reduce all that to its atomistic level, to sort of like its, uh, its chemical and, and atomistic qualities, uh, or I should say quantities, um, to its math is not how you explain all of life. You have to leave room for the unexplained, the immeasurable, the unmeasurable, and uh, the everlasting. Um, that's, that's what I love about, you know, that's kind of what I love about ideas, Ideas like faith, ideas like um, the Old and the New Testament. I'm not a Christian. I'm not Jewish. But boy, oh boy, do those books last. The, the stories are so full of flawed characters, especially the Bible, the, the Old Testament, and, and, and the books beyond the Torah are full of such flawed characters. Um, and somehow they are a metaphor for the kinds of things all of us have to contend with and face. Whether it's the flood, whether it's the Tower of Babel, whatever it might be, that I, I find that fascinating. That's, that's where ideas, that's where ideas last longer than almost anything else. So, and that's, speaking of weapons, that's a fucking powerful weapon. I mean, it's a powerful weapon. There are certain things that you can't, once you see, you can't unsee. The notion that forgiveness is a fucking miracle, man. Forgiveness for anybody listening, if you have people you resent or people have fucked you over, if you don't figure out a way to forgive them, and in a way, as fucked up as it sounds, even if you have to pretend to love them, Love your enemy. The value of that is you get to fucking move on. You don't sit in resentment, feelings of revenge, and all the shit that distracts you from your goal. That's where, as I get older, I, I admire those values and those qualities. I love that stuff. That's, it's a lot harder to do that. It's a lot harder. So the first thing I do before I kill someone is I go, I forgive you. It's fair. It's kind of you, actually. Yeah. What if you're in a hurry? Um, Afterwards? Yeah, then I just write it on their body in Aramaic. Fair. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's what I do. What do you think is the first tattoo a true operator should get? God damn, that's such a good fucking question. That's such a good question. Um, Punisher skull, maybe? Like full back piece? It's so obvious, though. It is. It's, it's, too, so on the, it's too on the nose. Yeah. What do you think? Probably just... Um, I know what it is. What is it? Molen Labe across your forehead. What is it? Molen Labe. Molten love? Molen lave. What is molen lave? Apparently what they were saying at Thermopylae means come and get some. Oh, that's good. Molen lave. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Or je t'aime. I don't speak French. Sorry, that's French for I love you. Why, yeah. why, why would you, where would you put that? I would put that on my forehead or just on my chest. Okay. Yeah. In like old English, 18 font. Air, like what that's a really good question. Um, I might just have a lotus flower that's opening, like my heart. Oh, nice. Yeah. With some blood coming out of it. Nice. What's a good, God, fucking, what's a good tattoo? Well, I mean, what is a good special operations starter tattoo? Probably a picture of me when I was a wrestler in high school. No, that's not good at all. Okay. Good. That would, a good starter tattoo? That, that tattoo would make people think. A good starter really tattoo like, for, a special, for an operator mm-hmm. who just started out? Just made it through selection. FNG, brother. <sighs> Fucking new guy. Like tram stamp? Yeah. Just above belt line. That's dead exactly center. right. 18 yeah. font, old and English. And for no reason, just a fucking unicorn and a dolphin on either side of his cum gutter. <sighs> okay. You know what I'm saying? I think so. Yeah. I don't want to On the inside of his yet. thigh would be good. Cum gutters are the obliques. Yeah. Yeah, you know how they go all the way down yeah. like that. If, you, if, if, you've been, if you've been using a lot of torque to throw your kicks and punches, you, you, you develop some obliques, brother. So, so one thing I do before I fight a man, I look at his hands, I look at his neck, and I look at his ears, obviously. Yeah. But typically, it's not going to go to the ground because I'm going to box you out pretty quick. But here's the thing. I'm going to look at your hands. I'm going to look at your neck. I'm going to look at your back and your traps to see if you're an athlete. And then the most important thing, I'm going to see what you're working with when it comes to obliques because that's where you get your core strength. I think we're missing an opportunity with either linked ammunition tattoo 
Linked ammunition tattoo. Or barbed wire. Or oh, barbed wire. Too. Or hey, fuck. If you wanted to, I would get I would get thorns. I get thorns tattooed both, around no. my head. M60 link with barbed wire over the top. I, I'm going to be honest with you right Operator now. Operator is fuck. I, I my cock has never been harder. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Trying to think. We've covered else. a lot of ground in this we podcast, have, man. We have because I know you deal with some serious subjects, and I think we're dealing with the most serious. Well, we're dealing with life and death. Yeah. And the I first mean, thing I say, would I, if I ever die, um, the, the the thing right before I die, you want to, you want to leave them with some guilt. What would you say? Love my children. I would try to like time it, like, hey, whatever you do, don't, and like, just that's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> just fade off. Hey, all the money is and just fucking out. <laughs> the treasure is. Yeah. yeah. I think I forgive you is better. I wasn't your real than just yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't your real fa. And just let it go. Yeah. Let it slide off into yeah. oblivion. That's good. What else? What That's else? Good. How can you spot an operator on the street? This is an important one too. Usually an aggressive beard. Usually sleeve tattoos. Mm. And flip flops um, generally. Uh, well, uh, yeah, or tactical gear or something like kind of boots with thick soles because they don't like being short. Um, and, uh, and usually there's some kind of jewelry going on. There's some kind of a talisman. There's some kind of a, there's something to ward off the evil spirits. A combination of like leather and rare metals. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say this as well, but if they're older and they've retired, their breathing revs at a different pace because they're probably doing something like Adderall or some kind of a testosterone derivative. Some people like to party. Then their skin tends to be the color of sort of, a, they, they've got that plum, hot dog skin. The yeah. They've got that plum yeah. colored skin with a lot of veins and, and their skin produces a lot of oil. We just call that the liver king shade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That poor fuck. Well, I went to the, uh, he did the podcast. Uh, nice guy. Very nice guy. Yeah, just not honest. He just struggles with well, honesty. Well, I don't know how anybody was like, what? You know, I, I just wish he hadn't doubled down, but I think he why got caught you, up in the thing. Why do you underestimate the number of absolute fucking idiots that we're surrounded by? Yeah, I, I, I'm always amazed at that. That's, might how, be, that's how bullshit scams are. Because I, I often wonder, how many times a day does your phone ring from a, when it says on there, like, potential spam risk? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. The only reason they're continuing to call is that somebody is answering that, and at some point in time, it terminates in money being given somewhere. Yeah. If it didn't work, they wouldn't do it. Yeah. And I do believe a lot of those calls who ends up getting scammed are the elderly, and they're probably just not able to keep up with tech, so it's kind of a different issue. But even other bullshit stuff, the only reason that shit continues is that there are, there is a cohort of not super savvy people. Uh, out there that continues to fall for that shit and people like the liver king can prey on that and they know what the fuck they're doing yeah you know nothing uh, he did was accidental uh, he gets no uh, pass from me on that yeah I, I i i will say this though if you look at the emails he seems to actually do what he preaches sure like he actually if what he preached meat, actually delivered yeah what he was selling yeah that's a different story that's right yeah. I'm always suspect of any kind of supplement. You know, one of the reasons that I like on it, they, they've been a sponsor for a long time on their podcast, is I know that the owners like Aubrey and, and Joe, I watched them take those supplements. I watched how serious they were about the the quality of the product, right? I think Aubrey's taking other supplements. No, now. no, it may be, but and he's having and, a and, sexual revolution. And the, well, the God bless Aubrey. By the way, I love that guy. I love I'm that not guy. saying I don't. I'm no. just saying. Yeah. He might have gone off label with some of the he, supplementation. He, I, he's hope he has. I hope he has. I hope he has. He's looking good and muscular. But Not judging he, it, saying he's on a different journey. He might be on a different journey. Well, yeah. he sold. I think when you sell your, he sold the company. I think with Joe and they. Uh, yeah, they, I don't know. N- yeah, and they, they're, now they're doing other things. So he made his money, and now he can just kind of hang. I think somebody else owns it. But I think that we are. You and I talk about this all the time. You know, you're surrounded by people that make a lot of money doing very questionably ethical things. It's, and if you can live with yourself that way and you think you can get away with it, then you go ahead and do that. But I don't want to look back on my life and think that I sold a bill of goods. I don't. I still feel bad about stupid shit that I said to people in high school. I could not, I could not, sleep, I could not sleep at night knowing that I was selling people something that was completely and utterly... Like, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, and I think, though, you win that way in the end. And I, when, I, when I say win, I don't know if you're going to be a billionaire. Uh, I, I do think that one of the reasons people 
listen to your podcast or uh, like being around you or would go into business with you is because they you're just authentic. You've never bullshit anybody, including about every time I talk to you about SEAL Team Six or anything, it's always so. Fucking. You call me to have your bubble burst. That's exactly right. You call me with just these grandiose thoughts and aspirations, yeah. and it's like, no. Yes. That's all bullshit. Yes. And all I want is it to be, I want it to, I want them to use mambas, <laughs> murder hornets, <laughs> and rats with fucking circular cameras on it, and none of that is fucking true. And they don't use Never. throwing stars or poison darts. Do you use poison darts? No. Nobody in the military ever uses a poison dart. Do you know how many people would fucking die from stabbing themselves accidentally? How about a poison cloud? What if a cyanide cloud, if you were like, and you just went, You're talking about generate, like, uh, like a Batman scarecrow? Under yeah, the dude. Yes. Why would you get that close to somebody? Because I could be like, I could be like, um, my, my watch is uh, broken. Because they would understand it, it, right? There's no language barrier in that whatsoever? No. 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 As they're racking their AK-47, get ready to put an extra hole in your head. But I'm saying if I was working in, in a... If I was in a liquidation squad, mm-hmm. if I had to liquidate somebody. Gotcha. Is okay. that what they call them? Yeah. Gotcha. They call them the... LS. The cleaners. The cleaners. Yeah, bring in the cleaners. If I was in, yeah. So if they got to bring in the cleaners. Why in the fuck wouldn't you have a cane? Okay. A cane or an umbrella or something. And you just go, and you just, it is it is James Bond shit. But I, think the K, I watched a show one time, but the KGB had one of those. But it yeah. shot a, a BB that was, he was dipped in something or saturated no, in something. No, this is the best. This is the best. You can get a gun to shoot a tiny ice ice blade into somebody's neck. Really? And the ice blade... It wouldn't, blade like, is, shatter or melt from cyanide. the heat? It's pure cyanide. Yeah. The heat and pressure wouldn't melt or malform that at all? It's going to melt into your body when the ice blade, when it's a little piece of ice that's super sharp that it shoots It would survive the neck. explosion out of the, out of the gun? That is a little bit of a challenge. It is, for sure. Yeah. What do you yeah. want to close it out with? Because your wife's going to get pissed. We're going to go eat. continue. Um... Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground. You know, we were talking about how when you... We kind of went all over the place. Well, I like it. Yeah. You, there's, that's why I was like, is it a cleared heart? Nobody is knows. Is it a tactical asshole? We don't know what it is. We don't have to put just, labels on things. It's 2023. It would be wrong of us to put labels on things. I agree. I hope people have learned something. I have. Yeah. I, I would say. I would say... I would say it's important if you're a young person to... Um, there are a couple rules... Or there, here's probably the best way to look at life. Um, one, you're not going to get away with anything. So make sure you try to walk a straight line and tell the truth um, to yourself, most important. Two, uh, typically the Occam's razor principle is really probably the most likely scenario. The scenario that is least sexy and, and, and the fact that it probably was some kind of an happy or unhappy accident or you could chalk it up to incompetence, not conspiracy, or hubris, not conspiracy, or just human fallibility and error. Um, I would also say beware of thinking that the entire journey encompasses self-perfection because uh, there's no such thing. Beware of purity. Beware of working to be pure, uh, whether that's yourself or your own society, because also that's unattainable and probably dangerous. Realize that you are flawed, human beings are flawed, and that's part of the fun that should be embraced. Those are the things that I, uh, I have been thinking about lately. And stay close to that which you can't measure. It doesn't all have to be explained to you. Sometimes... Learning what's behind the magic trick is how you take all the fun out of life. I hope you wrote that down, Andy. I don't need to because it was recorded. <laughs> God, On that note. <laughs>